I'm Steve for This Week With Cars and today we have a 1928 Ford Model A. It's been a very long time that this car has been sitting so today let's see if we can get it running again and possibly even driving. The best thing about cars from this era is that the brakes are all mechanical which means no matter how long they've been sitting they probably still work. Let's take a look under the hood. On this side, we have the generator and the starter. You can see the two-bladed fan. This car does use an ignition coil, which comes down to the distributor and then to the spark plugs. And this is not spark plug wire, actually uses a solid piece of copper to go to the spark plugs. On the other side, the carburetor is still in place, but we do not have an air filter here. So I hope nothing's gotten up and into the engine. Over here we have our valve to turn on and off the fuel going down to the carburetor. The updraft carburetors tend to leak fuel, especially when they're sitting, so it's always a good idea to have your fuel shut off when the car is not running. Everything is pretty simple and easy to get to. First, I think let's slide the crank into the crankshaft and see if the engine turns over. The crank for the car doubles as the lug nut wrench as well. Slide that in. The engine turns easily. We know it cranks over, so next we're going to need spark. Battery is underneath the floor. There's a little access panel right there to get to the wires. But to get to the battery and replace it, I'll need to pull the entire floor up. Here's the new battery I'm going to put in. This is a 6-volt car, and it is also positive ground. So the positive will go to this lead, which grounds to the chassis. The battery is installed. Let's see if anything happens. ammeter didn't move it might not be a good sign we are getting power at the starter and we're also getting power at the coil so let's turn the engine over and see if we have any spark i'm going to remove one of these spark plug wires just set it a close distance and if we have spark we should see it jumping across there I didn't see any spark, so now let's check the points. Now we have a good look at the points, and if I spread that apart, you can see all the corrosion on the points, so I'll get that cleaned up. Now I'll crank the engine over, and if the points are working, we should see it sparking right here. It wasn't sparking, so I guess we have another problem. Let's take this cover off. So obviously the insulation has worn through a couple of these wires. So I need to double check these and make sure they're not shorted out. This wire right here looks particularly bad. Definitely needs replaced. Looks like I'll be pulling the dashboard off. There are four screws. Take that off. I have it loose now and then I noticed that the ammeter was reading negative of the battery disconnected. Now I'll connect the battery, it goes to negative. The ignition is not even on. When I disconnect the battery, it goes back to zero. So there's definitely a short in the wiring. I have all of the wiring disconnected now, and luckily when they installed the new wires, they made them all red. Give me a second to sort this out, and I'll be back with you. 
I was trying to trace the wiring behind the dashboard and I had the one for the ignition switch tracked down. I wanted to pull out the two wires for the ammeter because they're the wrong color. And I think I found the problem. Here you can see these wires are just completely all melted together. I think they rubbed on the steel shielding of the other wire. And these are just toast. So I think I found my short. So it looks like I'm running all new wires up to the dashboard. Right now I have the ammeter eliminated from the circuit completely, and I've simplified things. I have my alligator clip wire here. This is the ignition switch that goes through the firewall. And then I have the other side of that wire connected to the ignition coil on the distributor side. This side of the ignition coil is the battery side, and that connects to this post in the terminal box, which goes down to the battery. Now let's turn the ignition switch on crank it over and see if we have any spark here at the points. It was faint, but that time we could see the points were working. Now I can reassemble the distributor cap and we'll do our original test again and see if we have spark now going to the plugs. Now I'll turn the ignition on, crank it over, and we'll see if we get a spark jumping between here. Just for fun, I think I'll crank it over by hand this time. Did you see that? The spark jumped between there. So we are getting spark to the spark plugs now. I'll give it another crank so we can see that again. We have compression and we have spark now. Next thing we need is fuel. I don't know what's in the fuel tank. So I'm going to undo the fuel line right here and then I can fill this line with fuel and fill the bowl on the carburetor. Then we can crank it over, see if it runs. I guess the good news is nothing came out of here. I have my fuel drip tank hooked up to that line now. So when I open up that valve, the fuel will rush down into the carburetor bowl. Probably leaking everywhere, but let's see. Valve is open. The fuel is rushing down the pipe. Looks like we are getting a little seepage out of this bolt here, but doesn't seem to be leaking anywhere else. That's really surprising and a good sign. Let's crank the engine over, see if it starts. Why did it start? and it moves. Let's see if this could have run off of the fuel tank. The valve turns, that's a good sign. Okay, nothing's coming out yet. Let's try the other valve. Let's try this valve now. Boy, that turns real hard. Well, I would think if there was anything in there, I would hear it running on the floor now. Let's see if we can see down into the tank. We can see the float right there. The fuel level is way down. I would think that some would still come out. So I think the valve is completely gummed up. Obviously this float probably doesn't work either. And it looks like there's a lot of stuff in there that would have gotten into the engine had I decided to use the tank.
The old 1928 Model A runs, but I have it completely bodged together. Next time, I'll try to fix everything and get it actually running and driving off of its own. Make sure that the water pump's running. Make sure that the generator is charging. Then once we have the car running and driving, we can start refurbishing other items on it. Please let me know if you want to see more of this Model A in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.